Did you know that men can make breast milk? That's not normal, is it? The medical term for that is called galactorrhea, and it is a milky discharge from the breast outside of being pregnant, and it can happen in a man or a woman. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 33-year-old man who came to his primary care doctor with complaints of this galactorrhea, or milky discharge from his breast that's been intermittent for the past few months. He's also noticed that his breasts have become slightly enlarged. He's also had decreased libido, and him and his wife have been attempting to get pregnant for a few years and have been unsuccessful. Upon further questioning, he's also complained of headaches as well as blurry vision, and on physical examination, he did have decreased vision in his peripheral periphery or on the outside of his vision. So what could this possibly be? This is a pretty classic story of a diagnosis of what's called a prolactinoma or a benign tumor of the pituitary gland. And his primary care doctor astutely ordered this MRI scan and you can see the pituitary tumor right here. Pituitary gland is a small pea-sized structure in the base of your brain that secretes hormones. These hormones are actually made in the hypothalamus of our brain, but are stored and released from our pituitary. There are two parts to your pituitary gland called the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary secretes several different hormones and one of them is prolactin. A prolactinoma is the most common type of pituitary tumor with over over 40% of tumors being this type. They most commonly happen in people under 40 years old and are more common in women than men. In women, the most common symptoms are missed periods, infertility, galactorrhea, as well as decreased sexual libido. In men, the symptoms are decreased testosterone levels leading to a decrease in sexual drive, galactorrhea, infertility, increased breast size called gynecomastia, and in either sex, if the pituitary tumor becomes large enough, it can cause headaches and trouble with your vision. It can cause trouble with the vision because the pituitary sits right below what's called the optic chiasm, which is the nerves that supply your vision that go to your eye. So if the tumor is growing bigger, it can actually push upwards and press on the optic chiasm, causing trouble with the vision. Usually prolactinomas don't get that big because patients will present with symptoms of hormone dysfunction well before the tumor can get that size. It's typically more common in men to grow to a bigger size before they are diagnosed. So how do we diagnose it? Well, you probably guessed it, is that we check the hormone levels in the bloodstream and particularly look at the levels of prolactin. An MRI of the brain is also performed to evaluate the pituitary gland for any size of tumor like in our patient. And in many cases of prolactinoma, they can even be what's called a microadenoma or a very teeny tiny tumor. Sometimes it even looks normal on an MRI, so we diagnose it with the blood test only. Okay, so now we've made this diagnosis with this huge tumor pushing on his optic nerve, so we need to go in there and cut it out, right? Actually, believe it or not, in most cases, we can treat prolactinomas with medication. There's two different types of dopamine agonists that we can use to treat these tumors. One is called bromocryptine, and the other one is called cabergoline. These medications decrease the level of prolactin that is made and can make these tumors shrink without surgery. Cabergoline is actually the first choice because it typically works better than bromocryptine and has less side effects. Although it's really rare, sometimes we do have to perform surgery to remove these types of tumors. These surgeries are actually performed through the nose. You can get to the brain through the nose. Neurosurgeon can place special instruments through the nasal cavity to drill into the sphenoid sinus to access the pituitary gland. And through the use of cameras and microscopes, we can easily remove these types of tumors transnasally. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? In some cases, if the tumor is really large, we do have to come transcranial where we go underneath the brain to get straight to the pituitary to remove the tumor. In our patient's case, he was started on cabergoline after the diagnosis was made and no surgery was needed. Typically, this medication is taken for a couple of years and then your doctor can monitor the size of the tumor and can even taper it off. And within just a few months, his wife got pregnant. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.